At this moment, there are millions of people in the hospital right now, suffering and in pain. There are many debilitating diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, spinal cord injury that caused the injured our nervous system and caused disability and death. Once I was the daughter of one of those patients. I've spent most of my childhood at the hospital waiting for my mom to go from one painful treatment after the next. For us, patients and family, the only hope is science. We always hope that a scientist in some part of the world will find a new cure or a new medication to alleviate the pain of those we love. As I grew up, I've decided to become a scientist myself, and I decided to try to solve it, or at least to try to help those people at the hospital. But even after many years of studies and all my efforts, I couldn't do much. Why? because science is slow. Every question generates more questions. What is pain? It's a response of the nerves to injury. What's nerve injury? It's a lesion caused to the nerve by a disease, an accident, or a tumor. How can we understand it? To really understand the mechanism of neuronal degeneration and how it leads to disability and death, we have to go deeper into our nervous system. The nervous system is formed by a network of neurons and neurons are smaller units that are made by cell bodies and axons, little wires that passes information from our brain, the power source, to the rest of our body, enabling us to speak, to think, and to move. To work properly, similar to the, well, let's say, similar to the electric wiring of a house, to work properly, the nervous system relies on the network and on the precision of neuronal connections. If the axons, the equivalent to the wires, or the neuronal connections, the equivalent to the switch, are damaged, the information path is compromised, and function may be compromised as well. Just like the electric wiring of a house, we can have a small damage that just burn a bulb, or a big damage and a complete blackout. When you find a dark room in your house, we have to investigate what is the cause. It could be a bad bulb, a burn fuse, or something else. To investigate lesions in the nervous system is even more challenging and difficult, because we do not have access to the precise region of the injury, and we cannot just open someone's brain and try to figure out what's working and what's not. In addition, all the structures, the neuronal connections and also the axons, they are very, very small. They are in the micro and nano scale. And to understand how they work, we need micro and nano tools. And that's the reason why I came to Montreal. Montreal is a very famous city in neuroscience research. Montreal is the city of Dr. Wilder Penfield and Dr. Brenda Milner, pioneer neuroscientists in the study of the brain and spinal cord injury. I started working at the Montreal Neurological Institute in a collaboration with the McGill Physics Department, where once Nobel Prize winner Ernest Rutherford also used to work. For me, it was the equivalent of being in a Disney world for scientists. Montreal had it all. You know, we had the great scientists, great facilities, and all the tools I need to finally understand how the nervous system is injured and how we could reconnect it. So, my plan was to use nanotechnology to take one neuron at a time, cut it, and try to reconnect it, try to make it functional again just like the same process as a disease does. The disease cut a neuron. So I was trying to mimic this in the lab and then try to understand how I could fix it. So I prepared the neuronal culture on a Petri dish. I took the culture to the microscope, and then I saw this entangled mess. Neurons on a Petri dish just do not organize like in the human body. They get entangled, they form clumps, and it's very hard to identify single axons, cut them, after injury, find where in this mess is the other half and try to reconnect it back to see if it's working or not. Back to the house analogy. You know when you have that broken electric cable in your house 
and then you try to fix it, and it's full of those mini wires. They are all the same color, all entangled, and you have no idea how to connect them back? Well, that's exactly the Petri dish, and that's what I was trying to fix. Even worse, every time we prepare neurons on a new Petri dish, they form a different network, completely different from the previous one. So if I just found a way to reconnect neurons in Petri dish number one, I try to repeat the experiment in Petri dish number two, and it takes me ages just to find the localization, how the network is working. Well, let's go back to the house analogy. Let's imagine now that you finally fixed that broken cable. And then, every time you turn on a switch, a different bulb turns on. <laughs> Aha, what happened? We have to change that. So if you ask someone else, if you ask another scientist to use exactly the same technique, to reproduce what you did, it's just not possible. It will not work. It's almost impossible for someone to make the same essay that you did there. And what happens is that every science has to repeat the same experiment over and over and over again. And every time you repeat the experiment, what's, what's happening? We're increasing the time. It, we're delaying the delivery of new drugs for those people at the hospital that are waiting for it. We're also increasing the costs because we're using more scientists, more equipment, more reagents to produce a new test. So everything is becoming more expensive and it's delaying. In fact, today, from 10,000 drugs being tested, only one will arrive at the market after 10 to 15 years of research and over a billion dollars investment. This is just too long. You know, in the past 100 years, Oh, more than 100 years ago, the Petri dish was invented to culture cells in the lab. And it has not changed until today. They use exactly the same procedure. In the meantime, scientists have evolved. They have become increasingly qualified. And microscopes have become complex machines with a much better vision than the human eye. This means that today we do have the technology to perform multiple tests a day, we do have the technology to automate the whole process, but we just cannot do this because the Petri dish is an outdated model. It's archaic and it cannot standardize the culture. We cannot send it to a microscope to read it by itself. In fact, lack of reproducibility is a big problem in science today. And what I've realized is that my major challenge as a scientist was not to have the best facilities, the best equipment, or the money. My major challenge was to try to reproduce the nervous system environment on a Petri dish so that we can get standardized, reproducible data. And this way, we can accelerate the drug development cycle. So that you better understand what I'm talking about and how the Petri dish works, let's make an analogy. Let's say we want to evaluate how people react to different events in the park, right? There is a concert. As people arrive in the park, some like to stay crowded, close to the band. Others prefer to stay distant in a more comfort places. If we take pictures from the event, what we are going to see is that depending on where the pictures are taken, we could have multiple subjective interpretations. If you see the picture close to the band, you say, oh, the event was crowded. If you see the picture further away, you say, oh, the event was empty, nobody was there. And it's very hard to compare between events. That's exactly what happens to the Petri dish. The cells, when they fall on a Petri dish, they organize themselves randomly. So now, imagine we organize the same event on a stadium. And then it's much easier to quantify how many people were present, because they are precisely seated on specific positions. So if we take an image, we can say how many people were present, how many seats were empty. We could even automatically write a program to count how many people were at the event just using a computer. And it would be much easier to compare the reaction of people between events. In addition, we could even get more data. We could ask the computer, check how many people were wearing a red shirt, how many people are standing. You see how organization makes data analysis much faster? That's what we want to do with the Petri dish. So I spoke to my friend engineer, and I said, I have this idea. Why don't we build a stadium for the cells? And then we did. And that's what I have here in my hands. 
In this small device made of silicon is a little mold that we create to grow 120 mini spinal cords in less than a centimeter square. Now, instead of having, you know, sitting in the microscope and try to find one or two axons a day, I have 120 perfect axons similarly organized as in the body that I could use and test as I will. I could slash all these 120 axons at once and try to reconnect it, see which drug is working or not, asking my other friends in other countries, other scientists to test the same thing. Easily we could compare the results. You see, the micromodes, just by organizing the cells, make drug testing faster more efficient and more reproducible. And I'm very proud to say that by using this technique, we achieved a major breakthrough, because now I had much more time to think and to do other things. We had this great idea. Why not to try to elongate the axons? And we managed to do that. We elongated the axons 60 times faster than they grow naturally. We were capable to reconnect the axons to other cells very precisely and make this connection functional. What does it mean? It means that in the future, we just need some more studies, but in the future, it will, surgeons will be able to use the same technique to reconnect nerves after injury. This is a huge hope. I could finally help those people at the hospital or give them more hope, you know? We can maybe, in the future, develop a new technique to reconnect your nerves and to help you regain your thoughts, your memories, and your movements. As I started presenting this data in different conferences, people came to me and said, oh, could I have these micromodes to use in my research? After one year, we've sold over 2,000 devices to people to accelerate research in Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson, multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injury, cancer, even in parasitic disease. At this time, I realized, you know, I developed these devices just to make my work more efficient. But suddenly, by mass producing it, I saw that it could help everyone else making their work more efficient. And this is a very rewarding feeling. It's a feeling like, you know, you can contribute to society. We can make a better world. So, in fact, if you check today, 10 of the most cited papers of all times, seven of them are new techniques or softwares that became essential in their field. It means that seven of those most cited papers were scientists that develop a new tool that enable other scientists to achieve better results much faster in a very standardized and reproducible way. Unfortunately, reproducibility is a big problem in science today. And in a recent survey published by Nature magazine, they show that in biology alone, over 60% of the research produced cannot be reproduced. Scientists cannot reproduce their own research. They are doing a lot of tests. What does it mean? It means that they have to make more and more tests and use the cells over and over and over again. And that means more costs and longer time to deliver drugs for those people that need it. We have to change that. It is about time that we develop something better than the Petri dish because we have the technology and there are millions of people in the hospitals right now waiting for us to bring medication from the lab to the bedside. What we're solving now is much bigger than just cells on a Petri dish. We're bringing research into the 21st century. The message I would like to leave is for all the kids watching, all the kids that, like me, have parents at the hospital, don't lose your faith in science because we can do better. We can do much better. We have the technology and we have the minds for it. For all the scientists watching, let's bring more innovation to science because we need it. Thank you.